This week, episode 310 of Stogie Geeks, Drew and I have the opportunity to interview Armin Kapralian of DAV Cigars. We're going to talk how they turn a 30-year friendship into a cigar company and how they got started and how they got the name DAV. And then in our second segment, Drew and I are going to be discussing our sticks of the week. It all starts on Stogie Geeks, episode 310, right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- a Vintage Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. This week, episode 310 of Stogie Geeks. I'm your host, Joe Zempa, sitting here in G-Unit Studios in Warwick, Rhode Island, smoking a little cigars. We also have Drew, live remote from Texas. Drew, how you doing? Good afternoon, fellas. Uh, just here in Texas, you know, uh, last night, stayed up a little late to watch this wonderful New York team. Yeah. Show us what you know what baseball isn't all about. That's true. That's uh, true. It was just it was just terrible. So this hat right now, I'm moving on from this hat. <laughs> you, I, dude, I, I, dude. I'm absolutely right now on air gonna just move on from this hat. You're yeah, done. Moving See on. This hat. Yeah, yeah. It's going back into the closet for next. And year. now I'm gonna pull out my. Oh, <laughs> look at that. My L.A. Laker hat. That's right, baby. It's coming out of the closet. It's time to get busy on the court and uh, watch my Lakers do something. You know, it's it's the, it's the Lake Show. Uh, if LeBron can just keep himself out of the politics, you know, we're, we'll be all right. So, and if the Yankees win three in a row? Well, if the Yankees win three in a <laughs> you row, can't wear that I, hat ever. I will be happy for all the Yankee <laughs> fans, including myself. There you go. And, and uh, you know, but uh, it's going to be a tough fight against that Houston yeah, team. Yeah, well, you know, it's all good. Stra- stra- stranger things is happening. Can't wait to yeah. talk about. Can't wait to talk about any type of victory. It goes either way. Uh, we also have the privilege, Drew. You and I have the privilege and the honor to interview Mr. Capralian of DAV Cigars. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. But, uh, Drew, don't retire that Yankee hat just yet. Ooh, I'll remind man. you of a certain World Series when we played a certain Boston <laughs> team where it was the other way. We were uh, 3-0, and and then Boston came back and, uh, and took the title. So I'm crossing my fingers that today will be different, and uh, let's see what we can do. So keep the faith, brother. Yeah, man. Baseball? Well, let me tell you. Let me, let me, let me tell you this. <laughs> Unless the legends come out of Legends Park, you know, the ghosts. Uh, I'll tell you, I knew this was going to be a crazy show when you get three Yankee fans and Stogie Geeks right. on Stogie Geeks. You know? And the best part is that we're all from di- different states. You're up in Rhode Island, Drew's down in Texas, so that makes it sweeter, I think. Yeah, yeah it's crazy oh, yeah. how that all, that all came together, you know. Very frustrating. Now you know, I, I know you're all swinging for the fences. A little hit will be just fine. That's one true. run at a time. One run at a time. You can't strand guys like that when bases are loaded. You can't do that. One sure. run at a time. We a should, little pepper. We should have pepper. done. Hadn't known the results of last night's game. We should have done an episodes of cigar company analogies to baseball. Please promise mm. me, the both of you, we will do that probably just after the first of the calendar year because uh, our, our schedule is starting to fill up. But the first yeah. quarter, we got to do like cigar 
company analogies in regards to baseball, and I bet you All that right. would be one hell of a cool episode for sure. I'm good with you that know? anytime. Because I want to get to DAV Cigars. This uh, cigar sure. uh, uh, company had come across me uh, via Drew, and I am totally intrigued when I see something new, something flourish. Uh, very intrigued at you know how your story came together, and if you could sure. elaborate that uh, for the Stogie Geeks listener and for myself, I'm, I'm going to probably be quiet and listen. Maybe. Sure. Uh, this goes back actually uh, many years. Um, I think I had my first cigar summer of 91. Mm. So, yeah, I was quite young. I was still in my uh, my late teens. And uh, so that's what got me into cigars. Been a smoker ever since. My uh, partner, on the other hand, Val, uh, who I know is listening in right now, uh, his story is a little bit more interesting than mine. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm American born, uh, I'm second generation, but I've had family here since the early 1900s from Armenia, uh, grandparents who were, uh, genocide, uh, survivors. Uh, but, uh, Val is also Armenian and, uh, he was actually on his honeymoon. Uh, I believe it was 89. Don't quote me on that. So double wedding, actually. So they're all down there. They're uh, having a good time. They're having drinks. And while they were in this bar, there was a, a gentleman uh, playing the piano quite well, from what I understand. And at some point, it seemed like it changed. It, there was a little classical or jazz. And then one of the people in the party just said, hey, you know, that sounds almost as if it's Armenian. And Val, of course, if you know him well enough, he's the first one to say something like, uh, you know, have another drink. I think you're imagining things. <laughs> As it turns out, when the gentleman stopped playing, he was a dignified man, nice white suit, and he approached them and he said, uh, are you Armenian? He said, yes, I am. So he extends his arm to Val and says, uh, Avo Uvezian. Mm. Not much of a reaction out of Val. He says, oh, you're Armenian. Okay, yeah, Val Atahanyan. Oh, <laughs> kind of takes this, like, kind of like, wait, you don't know who I am? Did this I just, is... yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, yes, the Avo. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Phenomenal was... musician, by the way. I could tell you oh, Avo's story. Unbelievable. Phen like, phenomenal musician. and There's uh, insane talent right there. Yeah. So, he was just there having a good time playing his piano and, and doing his thing. And he says, well, I, I'm sorry. I know that you're Armenian, but I, I apologize. I don't recognize the name. He says, well, do you like cigars? He says, well, I've never I've never really smoked a cigar. So I'll just <laughs> reaches into yeah, yeah. his uh, breast pocket and hands Val what was his very first cigar hmm. over 30 years ago. Wow. So Val got hooked on cigars ever since. Um now, he and I have known each other through the community for over uh, 30 years, mm -hmm. me being in real estate, him being in the car industry. But and, and you'll agree, cigars have a way of bringing people together. Sure. And uh, it was a few years ago, and we were at uh, some meeting or convention, something going on in Chicago. And uh, he says, why don't we just grab a cigar? So we started talking, and he says, you know, I've always been intrigued with the business. Uh, I've always wondered what it would be like to get into the business, and, and I'm, I'm strongly considering it. It's just, well, you know, I've, I've been uh, a smoker uh, for X amount of years, and I know some people in the industry. This is, uh, you know, why don't we give it a shot? So it was a few years ago. We started uh, small, just really with uh, private labeling, and then we had the idea of creating the DAV brand. Mm -hmm. and. Things just really worked out because we have a, a tremendous partnership with our factory, which is in Santiago and Via Gonzalez, Dominican. And we've taken off since then. I mean, people thought we were crazy. Um, you know, this is a, it's, a, it's a crazy volatile time for the industry with everything going on with the FDA and plus being so competitive and so many brands out there. And uh, we kind of went into this cold. Uh, so it's uh, just been a constant learning curve for us, but we do have a love for the industry. We have a love for cigars. Uh, we, I, I'm confident we have a very, very good product. Uh, and so we're just trying to forge ahead and uh, see where it takes us. Mm. You, you started off as a private 
label brand for the Stogie Geeks Very listener. Very small overseas people, <laughs> yep. who, you know, if they wanted, you know, a, a, a particular cigar for events or things like yep. that. Or okay. Things that yeah. Um, was it from that same factory or was it different? It was Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same factory. Okay. okay. Yep. And the and the reason why I'm asking is is business sure. wise, right? Business yep. wise, you, you, you can make a decision, you as 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 a partner. Uh, right. Uh, you know, you, you guys have a partnership. You know, business wise when you're a private label in any industry, you have the choice. You can get uh, cer- certain samples from this cigar and then have it done under your event-based marketing or whichever. Or yeah. you can develop a relationship and tweak blends and, and do smaller batches, smaller batches than the boutique. I, I, ju- right. I, I just wanted to clarify that from the Story Geek listener because, yeah. on to- because on top of all this Story Geek stuff that Drew and I and other guests and hosts talk de- you know, week in and week out, you know, and we get into the boutiques, there's also a layer of ultra boutiques. And then, right. you know, you have premium and you have exclusives or, you know, some of the major brands try to do kind of limited release as they're most often called. And I, and I just wanted a clarification as different. So you had a, a existing relationship with this factory, right? So, yes, so correct. Okay, so, so when, again, you're, 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 you've had the opportunity to work outside of the industry and then come yeah. in the industry. So when you yeah. work outside of the industry and you come in from, from the industry, you have to have a profile in, 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 in your head as opposed to, I used to work for this other cigar company and we've done these blends, so I'm going to start right. my own company and we're going to go different from these blends. And so take myself and Drew and the Story Geek listener, what was going when you start a company from that? I'm assuming right. you you break out a pad, right? It's done yeah. over cocktails or coffee or spirits or a meal Pretty or much. whichever. You break out a pad and you say, "Where do we begin?" Right? Take us through that kind of palate driven thought process that sure. you had for your cigars. And then my second question is, are those cigars still available today through 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 your line? Well, uh, you, you pretty much uh, uh, hit it on the head. Uh, let's just say that uh, uh, we would spend quite a bit of time in DR, and uh, a lot of cigars were consumed early in the morning on an empty stomach. Uh, uh, a lot of many bottles of Brugal. We have went through many bottles of Brugal and coffee and things like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you talk about pen and paper and, and going through oh. a million and uh, one blends. Um, the one thing that really helped us again, just getting into this side of the business was, um, uh, the gentleman, uh, Dico, as we call him in, in the factory is uh, third generation. So he, he grew up, uh, he was born into this business. Uh, and the other thing that, uh, we're blessed to have are master rollers who have also been doing it, you know, in 20 years, 30 years, uh, have worked at other, um, uh, major factories. So um, to have that kind of expertise was uh, was crucial. And so at, at that point, going through some of the, the private blends and obviously uh, preferences that I have, preferences that my partner has, um, we just kind of went in there and said, okay, these are the certain profiles that we like that we're looking for. Um, now, obviously, everybody has a different palate. Uh, I might like something mild. You might like something super heavy, very bold with a lot of spice. And then there's everything in between. So if we were going to create our, our, our own brand, obviously, we want to cater to everybody. So the idea was to have a, a really mild, a mild to a medium, a medium, a medium to a full, and a full body, and of course, all these different sizes. So uh, we had ideas of uh, certain tobaccos that we wanted to utilize. And then that's that's where uh, the process started uh, taking shape. Um, you know, we'd have the guys, you know, tweak and, and do certain things, uh, some of which uh, came from our, our uh, uh, private blends. And uh, we, we initially came up with uh, five, five different blends. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want, I can go through them or yeah, if you have yeah, a question. Yeah, please do. Um, we have our Habana Classico, which um, 
I'm pretty honored. A lot of people in the industry uh, have compared it. This is wow. This, if I didn't know better, if there was no label on this, I would think this is a top-notch Cuban cigar. Um, it's got a Habana 2000 uh, wrapper. We, we use uh, Dominican filler and binder. It's a medium to full. And as you smoke, the profile changes. Uh, it comes off, uh, you know, bold, spicy, and, and the profile changes as, as you smoke through it. So that's something we said for the everyday smoker, someone who likes a, a, a fuller blend. Mm -hmm. Definitely something you would want to have after a nice dinner or something with a cocktail uh, of, of sorts. Um, we have our aristocrat, and that's been extremely, extremely popular. It's a, uh, it's a medium blend, um, also with a uh, Habana wrapper, Dominican uh, filler binder, and it's got hints of vanilla. It's a, it's a very smooth cigar. I would definitely categorize it as a, uh, as a uh, medium body. Um, later on, we created our uh, Mestizo, and I believe Drew had one. It's the one with the black label. Uh, it's a nice uh, full body. Oh, yeah. Um, not harsh, not over. So people sometimes associate, oh, wow, well, if it's a really full, uh, full body cigar, then it's going to be too harsh. It's, it's going to bother my throat, et cetera, et cetera. Not at all. I would say it's uh, definitely our most complex blend. Uh, there's a, there's a, a smokiness and oakiness to, to it, uh, hints of chocolate, but certainly not something that's going to uh, uh, irritate you in any way. Again, something phenomenal after a, a nice meal you're winding down in the evening with a nice cocktail um we have our prima natural which is a uh, uh, a connecticut wrapper uh um indonesian uh binder dominican filler and um this is something mild if you want to start your day off with a cigar early in the day that's an absolute uh, perfect cigar and similar to that we have uh, a, a petite corona which uh, also has the uh, connecticut wrapper very nice easy quick smoke whether you're on a coffee break or whatever the case may be um, in any case so we we said we wanted something from mild we wanted to cover the whole spectrum and of course just going through numerous 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 blends uh me val uh, the guys in the factory, um, close friends of ours who've been in the industry, you know, just to get some feedback if we need to tweak it here and there. Once we were uh, happy with the five blends, then, you know, we decided on the different sizes, various sizes, Presidente, uh, Churchill, Robusto, Torpedo, all that stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that was it. And we've been uh, pushing these uh, blends ever since. That's awesome. That's awesome. Drew, do you have a question? I have some. No, you go. <clears throat> no what I was going to say is that Mestizo uh, Corona that I had, I mean, yep. I'm going to tell you, man, that that, that old, old, old door Dominican really comes through. I mean, it's it's not overpowering at all like some of the Olor that we're used to. And right. so the mildness around the uh, with the San Andreas wrapper and the Dominican refiller, I mean, that cigar for me is definitely on my rotation list because – I mean, it. The size was. Uh, I mean, for being that size, I mean, the taste, the flavor, uh, the spices. Just, I mean, everything was subtle, but you can definitely key in on those notes for sure. Uh, the color that uh, the petite Corona uh, with the Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian and Connecticut. I mean, that was another great stick. And uh, I mean, I haven't tried the other sticks yet, but I'm getting. I'm making my rounds to that. But I'll tell you, I, I've been impressed so far with. Their lineup. So, Drew, Thanks, so are they available within your neck of the woods? No, they, uh, okay. not yet. Okay. I'm actually, we're actually working on that. Uh, okay. They're on the East Coast. They're on the West Coast. Matter of fact, I was talking to a friend of mine in California who goes to a casino. He's like, dude, I had I have those cigars. I, we have them here in California. I mean, they're up and down the coast. Mm -hmm. And so that was that was very, uh, you know, you know, to me, that was very uh you know, uh, like not surprising, just like, Oh, that's cool. And these are people that are just following me on my, on my Facebook page. And they would say, Hey man, that's a great cigar. You got to try the, the classical Habano and try that in a, in a, in a, uh, a Toro size, uh, and, and go from there. But yeah, 
Yeah, closest. Thanks, to brother. Did you say uh, in a casino? Is that what I heard you say? Yeah, Agua Caliente. Agua Caliente. When you said uh, casino, yeah, they carry our brand. So big shout out to them. We're very uh, yeah, very oh, yeah. appreciative of that. You guys mind if I actually light one up? Now, mm. now I'm craving a cigar. Please do. I mean, you know, Stogie geeks. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, absolutely. Uh. You know what? Well, uh. For you Stogie geeks listeners, you go to davcigars.com. They have a store locator. Um, I, the first thing yeah. I did when Drew sent me the link in your in in your contact information, and I'm try, and I was seeing where where they are closest to us. Uh, right. Closest to us here is in Tewksbury, uh, Massachusetts, and then Watertown, Massachusetts. Uh, there, Hopkinton, Ma- uh, Marlboro, and stuff like that. So. Um, we also actually, uh, our friends over at Broadway Cigars, uh, he carries our brand as well. Over in sure Providence? You know. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, are they on the, are they on their website? I, I must've missed that. No, no, they're not. So oh. no. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Cause I was like, oh, you know, I, I love the opportunity to, um, you know, definitely, Especially after the interview, it's gonna be cool now, sure. right? So when I get my hands on them, I can. We're come Yankee back. fans. I can. I get that, right? And 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 you know, uh, then when we did our te- our quick test call for for the for the Zoom secu- uh, security ha! for yeah. the for for the uh, Internet of Things to make sure that everything works from the audio perspective, uh, find out that like you're we're almost neighbors. You know, couldn't say, yeah. I'm 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 closer to you than I am Drew. <laughs> oh, that's you know? hey, so, hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> ah. I'm wonder he's bread. No. Okay. <laughs> Let me just tell you right now. He's the man he's the manhole cover uh chicken fried steak and I'm his mashed potatoes and gravy. I so we, I'm I'm just telling you right now, we 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 had a good connection while he was down here in Texas last week for these cigars yeah. and spirits events, and I'll tell you it was it was fun hanging out with Armin and 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 getting to know him, and just being you know I mean this is a guy that I know that he, he's in my tight circle and you know what I'm talking about Armin. Well, Let me tell good. you, and I'm glad you said this because please I I did want to utilize this time to say this much. Um, so last weekend was a, a cigar uh, spirit and cigar tasting in Texas in Dallas Fort Fort Worth. It was the second annual. And um, I have to really thank Brenda Scott, uh, just a, a beautiful, wonderful human being who's always been just so sweet and so supportive. And it was her idea. She thought it would be great for us to have a presence there. She says, look, it's only the second annual, um, but it had great feedback and we're anticipating uh, double um, the presence this year. And I said, well, we all know uh, that uh, cigars uh, and, and Texas are synonymous with one another, and uh, we, we certainly wanted to have presence uh, in Texas. And I figured, hey, this might be a great opportunity to be down there and, and get a feel for the cigar culture in Texas and uh, meet people. And so once I had that set up, we, we decided, all right, we'll, we'll partake in this, uh, uh, in this event. Uh, I, uh, it was through, it was because of her that I had the opportunity to meet, uh, Andrew. And from the time I landed and met up with him at a prestige cigar lounge, um, we hit it off. I mean, there is really something to be said about Southern hospitality. And I felt that with him and with everybody that I interacted with, um, I kind of left, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a diehard New Yorker, but I certainly left my heart in Texas because the hospitality and, and just the culture there and how people are just warm and inviting and the event itself, more than I bargained for. I mean, there there must have been over, and you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, 800 people who came to this uh, this spot and every the camaraderie, um, and it was it was very well put. So also my hats off to uh, Brianna Wheeler um, at uh, Cigar Spirits and you know, the the crew just did a wonderful wonderful job putting this uh, event together and it went so smoothly. And um, I honestly I cannot wait to get back there uh, for this event next year. Um, but Drew again, he 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 just played host, and 
Uh, to me, if I had a bucket list for Texas, I, I could easily check every one of them off, uh, thanks to him. So you guys are lucky to have them. I'm lucky to have them. And I could say stay tuned because there's going to be a lot more going on with uh, Drew and the AB Cigars. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There yeah. You go. And, and, and Drew, just so you know, uh, that those statements that uh, Amon just mentioned, uh, that's how we began our test call. Like he was like, yeah. man, let me tell you about my weekend. Like I went out with Drew, we ripped it up. Like you know. <laughs> well, and I, I'm gonna tell you right now, we haven't even made it down south yet. We haven't made it to Austin. I was telling him, I said, dude, next time you come in, I need you here for at least a week. We need to get down to Austin, San yeah. Antonio, yeah. uh, down to Galveston, and just I mean, this state is huge. I mean, so I mean. I was telling our master, man, too bad you didn't have a few more days because uh, I would definitely take him down to Austin and, and show him I that. I was blown that. away. I mean, everything that we squeezed in even before the show, I think, was all within a 10-mile radius. Yeah. And yes. Thinking to myself, My God, what does the rest of this state hold? So, yeah, I'm, I'm oh. very uh, uh, very anxious and looking forward <laughs> to explore the state and uh, and uh, get acquainted with the uh, with the cigar culture down there and – I'm lucky enough to have Drew down there. So, yeah, I can't wait to make my next trip. Yeah, Drew and I met. I, I just got well, – go ahead. No, you go, Drew. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I got to get Joe down here. I got to get Joe, Joe, yeah. and Paul down here. Dude, you go down – If I <laughs> first of all, if I go down to Texas, I'm not bringing any flat brim hat. I have gorgeous hair underneath this hat. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> right? My hair is going – I'm putting pomade in my hair. I'm putting my hair up in a pompadour. <laughs> I'm taking my guitar and I'm gonna go hawk some money in my cowboy boots and playing some honky tonks. Oh yeah, Johnny San Cash Antone. style, baby. Down down in San Antonio because I've done that. I've done that in Boston. Uh, I played on stage with Duke Robillard twice. I went to really. Yeah, I went to Berkeley College of Music. And let me tell you something. I love playing on stage and I love ripping it up and. You know what I mean? It, it's 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 so cool, like to just you know play some stuff and have people like drinking your tunes. And if it's the type of place where they're not afraid to dance, it's just the coolest thing, man. Like you know. So once in a while, a couple of brain neurons fire in my head, and I actually put together a fairly decent thought. Yeah, yeah. So here's one for you. We're gonna kill about three birds with one stone uh, <laughs> next year. All right. Ready for this? One? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. You and I are going to fly down for this event next year. Yes. So you'll experience everything I experienced with Drew, and it'll be an absolute blast. You'll get to see the event and, and be there, and I would say even cover it for Stogie Geeks, yeah, which yeah. would be phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And three, during the four hours that we were at this event, they had a live band. No so you can ha <laughs> uh, partake in the event. Yeah. You can do your thing in Texas, and you get to play on stage at the event. There you go. I'm, I'm in. I am hey, in. They allowed me to break dance, so I was cool with that. I was popping and was locking. Is that why you had the cardboard Good. in the back of your truck? <laughs> yes, that's what that cardboard was. <laughs> I, I was like, wait a minute. I want to be the halftime entertainment here, so let me break this out. And Brianna was like, mm, I, we don't have – you have to sign a uh, – what do you call it? A waiver. A waiver? A waiver. Yeah, yeah, waiver. There you, you go. Get I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Joe, I was wondering, one minute he's in uh, Texas cowboy gear, and the next thing I know, he's like got parachute pants and shell top Adidas with fat laces on with his boom box. Yeah, I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> That's how they do it over there. You know what I mean? They can't make up their mind. He tried to get me to do the helicopter with him, but I was like, no, no, no. Yeah, man, I man. can't do the helicopter. There's a four, I'm, I'm 40 change, and, you know, my, my, helicopter, know, day, my, my helicopter days are over. It's just like riding a bike, brother. It's just like riding a bike. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so um, what are your plans, and what's your – uh, like target cigar smoker profile. Well, well, what are your plans for moving forward? Because it sounds like you you got some some shelf space on the West Coast. You got some shelf space on the East Coast. Did that work out? If you're watching me, I don't know if that worked out. It could be this. Yeah, way, yeah, yeah. Right. So so you got shelf space there. Then you know you you you're going for there. But what well, what's 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 coming up? Are you working on some some newer blends? Uh, are you looking to just take those blends and go into uh, uh, more and more shops? What's your kind of strategy for that? And have you ever been to IPCPR or whatever the heck it's called now? 
You've been down so there. So if this were multiple choice, the answer is D, all of the above. Gotcha. All um, right, that's cool. <laughs> uh, we know how uh, vast and how crucial the U.S. market is. So, yes, certainly uh, expansion uh, throughout the U.S. We're lucky enough uh, to have uh, uh, a great group of guys in Canada with Nub Cigars. And um, we have had presence uh, at IPCPR for the past couple of years. We've had a really nice booth. So, yes, we do have our presence there. And uh, uh, certainly we're able to uh, create some wonderful relationships with uh, uh, retailers, distributors. Um, actually, last month, uh, I was blessed to be present at uh, Intertabac in uh, Dortmund, Germany. Mm, yeah. Uh, up until now, it was uh, it was uh, like a thought, and uh, I I knew that uh, our presence there would would be important for sure. But uh, it was after being there that I realized how important. Uh, I have to say, it it is so well organized, and it, it really left a lasting impression. And you get to meet uh, so many, again, retailers and distributors and sales reps from all these different countries. And, and it's fascinating to me because, one, I love other cultures and uh, I love to travel. Uh, but, again, you know, how, how it ties in with the cigar culture and it, it just – varies uh so drastically from one country to another so if the idea was to have presence uh, overseas in europe in asia or, or wherever else uh which which it is um being at enter to back is is an absolute must and uh, i suggest that uh if uh, you gentlemen um have the time to do it next september I highly recommend it. It, mm. it really is a, a phenomenal event. So we have Inner Tobacco every year. We have IPCPR. Um, Val and I do do a ton of events. And uh, one thing that uh, we're also uh, very proud of, it's not for any bragging rights, uh, it's more than uh, just a bottom dollar. It's more than just making a profit on the cigar. Uh, Val and I are uh, uh, really involved in uh, – uh, in doing um, fundraisers, charities, and things like that. Um, we've done it in California, New York, New England. Uh, we did one over the sum summer. A good, a good buddy of mine, he's, a, uh, he's an officer with the NYPD, and they put together uh, a, a big, big softball tournament every summer, and the proceeds go to – it's different every year. Sometimes it's for – uh, families of 9-11, uh, emergency responders. Uh, it's it's always for a good cause. And, you know, when he said a softball tournament, I expected a few teams. They're going to get together at, 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 a, at a particular field, and uh, and that will be that. But apparently there, uh, when I got there, I was blown away because there were 22 teams from all across the United States, even from Texas, California, Washington, Chicago, Um and it was something else. So we were very proud for that. Um, Brenda, actually, I know is involved. And we actually, at, at the, the Texas uh, event, we donated some boxes to the uh, uh, Cigars for Warriors mm -hmm. uh, for the soldiers. So, so uh, you know, these are things that are very near and dear to our hearts. So that's a big thing. Um, as far as our uh, strategy, you know, I know, I know how important and crucial online uh, can be, but um, for the time being, uh, for, for, for various reasons, uh, we're sticking to the old brick and mortar. We like supporting our retailers because I know how the online really squeezes uh, the uh, retail industry, and uh, we like to support the brick and mortar as they've supported us. So um, the idea is to continue getting into these stores and doing our events, et cetera, and besides, you know, uh, obviously the, the goal of uh, any company would be uh, growth. Um, and, and it's funny because uh, here we are in, in uh, the greatest country with the biggest opportunity. Um, and everybody's just kind of biding their time. And I would say even has it, and especially boutiques such as our, our, our DAV. 
because of all the uncertainties surrounding FDA regulation mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yes, you want to go. And at the same time, you're like, well, wait, we really don't know uh, where our fate lies in all of this. So um, it's a very pivotal time. Uh, we don't know which way that pendulum is going to swing. So, yes, we have uh, plenty of strategy for growth. And at the same time, we're also very cautious of what we're doing and what we're spending, uh, where we're spending, how we're spending, because again, um, there are still too many unknowns uh, where the cigar industry is concerned and the FDA. And um, where do you fall with that? How it's really, I mean, it's gonna impact everybody. I don't care what people say, it will impact the industry across the board. Um, But the first ones to feel that impact will be the boutiques, Mm -hmm. so. Let me ask you a question. Two questions. Sure. And if yeah. I if I ever overstep my boundaries, you just say, Joe, change subject, and I will, right? Two questions come to mind. Number one, where do you fall with that uh, predicate date? Are you before or after it? You're, you could be after it, right? Logic would tell me. Well, actually, the, the great part is that uh, our factory – had been uh, manufacturing cigars and had been on the U.S. market prior to us uh, forming our relationship gotcha. uh, with okay. them. So uh, that's uh, that was a major plus. That was kind of like, Ooh, yep, okay, gotcha. we're yep. good with that. But still, every I, you know, it, the FDA doesn't even know how to regulate it, and it's it's um, it's very frustrating. Uh, I mean, I think overall it, it's it's just a travesty. And to even categorize, put put cigars in the same category as uh, cigarettes or vapes and e-cigarettes and things like that. I mean, you're comparing apples and oranges. I mean, everything else that I mentioned, these harsh chemicals, and now the big uproar with the e-cigs and the vapes and um the uh the the effects on uh, people's health and now they're really cracking down on that as they should but look let's uh let's let's be real about it the recipe for this from day one however many hundred years it's been has not changed this is comprised of a a binder a filler and a wrapper that's facts facts not inhaled there are no other chemicals involved so um are there other reasons behind this um i don't know what they are but i know cat- uh, categorizing them with all the other products that i mentioned it it makes absolutely no sense to yeah me. see i mix i i you, you you bring up a lot of of interesting topics that we hear very, very frequently here on this show and other podcasts and themes and, and newsletters or magazines or whichever for the industry, right? And yeah. my my take my my take is 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 a couple of fold, right? First and foremost, I'm not here to say that premium tobacco smoking is better than vape or cigs or whichever. Okay, however. Uh, if the premium tobacco smokers that I know that smoke premium cigars are like, I ain't touching cigarettes. Like, like, I, right. like, like right. I, I wouldn't even like, I'd be like, hell no. Like, you know, like hell no. Can't stand it. Right. It's crazy to stand outside and freeze and all that concept that there. So I have that argument. So yeah. that argument leads me from a right. business perspective to say, okay, everyone needs their own category. It shouldn't be. Cigarettes, OTB. It needs to be cigarettes, vape, premium tobacco, a chewing tobacco or oral tobacco, whatever the heck you call it, snuff, OTB, whatever, right? Right, right. Then once you get your grown category, then the FDA should begin to define what potential uh, taxes, levies, penalties, research, whatever, whatever they want to do. Then, so if I'm in that category, if we accomplish our own category, this is why I think that IPCPR, this is why I think that um, uh, any type of uh, political activist when it comes to premium SCAR, um, any type of organization like that, uh, any type of 
um, bigger cigar companies that have a hundred year generation have a chance to sit in front of the floor. Now we did this on a local level here in Rhode Island. They were they had a couple of things going on. Right. Right. In Rhode Island, they were going to uh, they were they were going to raise the cigarette tax to four and a quarter to four fifty. And then they were going right. to raise the tobacco cap. We have a cap tax here. And what that means for the Story Geeks listeners is the retail store buys it, they keystone it, and then there's a tax on that. Now, in the state of Rhode Island and the state of Connecticut, that's 50 cents per stick if the stick is over $2.37. So basically, wow. any premium tobacco stick will be over $2.37. So it's 50 cents per stick. It's called a cap tax. So if you buy an $8 cigar or a $20 cigar, it's a 50 cent cap tax. It's like that in Connecticut and Rhode Island. Yeah. Massachusetts, since all those kind of border, right? Since all those border, uh, Ma- Massachusetts is a percentage of, of the stick. I believe it's 42% or 48% of the stick. However... Uh, I've had conversations with uh, uh, Casey Hogan of Crux Cigars, and the owner right. of Crux Cigars, his name's escaping me for, for, for the moment, right, where they have a, their home shop in, um, in Minnesota with tobacco mm-hmm. tax at that time was when I spoke to them back in 2015 was 92 or 94 percent right so each state has their own regulatory process okay yes now when you go to federal which is where companies like yourselves and the big guys are really concerned the argument becomes well the big guys have the money in the bank and the little guys or the boutiques might not have the money in the bank so therefore, it's not fair to the, uh, uh, to to pay a research FDA fee for what exactly, which is on the table, right? There you go. Of of what is in a premium cigar wrapper binder filler. Now let let's let's just let, let's just peel back the industry for a second, right? This let's table the cigar industry here. Let's take another industry. We're in the industry of making of making cigar labels, okay? So we have a printer, right? We'll talk about the format. We have a printer, and we buy paper. And if we buy paper from Canada versus paper from, I'm not picking on mid turn this into a political d- discussion, but let's say that we buy paper from China. It's going to have a different tax, i.e., you have a different cost of operation for business. Okay? Correct. Wouldn't a boutique cigar company do an economics 101 class that I've learned, I have a degree in economics, right? So of, of a freshman, I learned this as a freshman from a state college, okay? I graduated from Rhode Island College, not University of Rhode Island, right? right? I graduated, so, so uh, wouldn't they just do what an economics 101 would be right. so pass the cost on to the consumer? We do it with gas all the time, right? Gas goes up, prices go up. Gas goes down, gas goes down. Each state has their own gas tax of what it is per gallon in, in what you spend, right? So wouldn't we just do that? And if we did the math, and if we did the math, it would come out to, now I understand the potential fine, or not, not fine, the potential research fee, I'm sorry, the potential research fee, they're kicking around 250000 there. But wouldn't that price be $0.70 cents per stick? If you're doing a 250 balance, so pass this. Pa- so like, I almost want to like go up to the SBA and be like, dude, taxes, let's get it over with. Can we move on? Because it to me, getting now I'm taking the cigar industry and putting it back in the in the in our discussion here. To me, it's stopping creativity of other companies from moving forward, and 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 they operate in fear. You know what I mean? Or well, here's here's what you're doing differently. You're thinking logically. Um, I, <laughs> sure, sure. I, I, you, I'll be very honest. <laughs> exactly. I, you know, <clears throat> I talk about this with uh, with other people, with uh, with other cigar manufacturers, uh, manufacturers both from uh, big companies and boutiques such as myself, and we just can't wrap our head around it. It's uh, it's 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 disturbing, actually. Right. Um. So, look, it's it's all about, and and, and uh, I I send this message to all boutiques. You know, there's room, there's plenty of room for growth, mm-hmm. and there's room for everybody. Yes, I sir. think it's crucial that we all uh, stick together, work together, grow together, 
And there's also the importance of uh, legislation. Uh, you know, we should be talking to our uh, congressmen and, and senators and, and uh, uh, lobbying is is, is uh, so important. And I think we're lacking in that area. And if you don't mind, I, I, I do want to mention uh, 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 one avenue uh, for this, uh, which is the, the BCA, the Boutique Cigar Association. Mm. I, I, if you're a boutique, you want to survive in this business, as I said, uh, there's certain numbers. I think we all need to stick together. Um, and the BCA is, a, is the platform to do it because this is a place for all of us to just come together, work together. Um, and my buddy, I don't know if he's listening down in Miami right now, Gabby Caffey of uh, Caffey 19 Cigars. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope he is. And, and, I, and I urge and I truly hope that you do have him on as a guest because uh, he was a tremendous help from uh, day one. He, he uh, welcomed us uh, as if we were acquaintances forever and a day. Uh, but more importantly, and this is, and, and again, this this how this ties in with the FDA and the testing that you mentioned, Joe. He is a doctor, right? Yes, I know. Uh, I'm very familiar. And with that. his his uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. He's a hot uh, doctor. If if yes. we're if we're getting specific, he's a hot doctor, right? How, how do you define uh, hot? Heart, heart. I'm sorry. <laughs> hot. I, was, I know it's uh, your New England accent. A, I know. Uh, I was like, hey, wait, great wait, point. Where are you going? With he's this? a hot doctor, right? No, he's he's a heart. Uh, Heart doctor, you know, right? If if, if I'm a hundred percent, I'm I'm familiar with the story. Uh, there. Yeah. So yeah. he's uh, that and and his his uh, wealth of knowledge in the industry. Um, I I would say let him let him be the face because I already know in conversations he's already been to Washington numerous times. Uh, he's on the ground running. Uh, you know, meeting with the uh, with the uh, politicians. So the guy can't do it alone. Uh, he's not going to run his own company and, and also champion the cause of, uh, of, the, uh, of the boutiques. So, uh, again, I would certainly urge you guys to have him on as a guest, to have him uh, send his message out. Um, I think everybody should listen in because that will be a very interesting, uh, very informative, very eye-opening uh, segment. Um, and that's it. That's that's pretty much all I can say on that. So uh, I urge everybody to really, really get involved with that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all about education for sure. I mean, it's all about, you know, going in and reading uh, all the facts. Even the FDA has uh, a, a segment about the cigar uh, <clears throat> industry and the harmful effects. And look, just like anything else, you know, everything in moderation at this point and without, you know, without fear you know and then and that's one of the things that i always tell people you know what when you read something out there that people put out you know fact check it and just go to the fda website you'll see yeah. what they say about cigars you'll see what they say about the percentages and things of that nature and right. and and so for that you know uh i think we could just take that to the bank and cash that check and and, and move forward but again i'm, I'm my, my my brain this is like me not still geeks you drew any you know paul I, right. like my brain it's revenue generating activities okay define a category decide what you're going to do with that category yeah. move forward so we can all move on because i've been having this conversation since late 2014 you know what i mean and 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 i, I still believe that I, 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 if if I were making a, my own stick, I would say, okay, we gotta make sure we have some cash reserves. Make sure I have access to this f research fee. Let's move right. on and produce sticks. Cause what am I gonna do? I'm gonna pass the cost on to my consumer. I'm gonna pass it on to my consumer. I'm not gonna eat the the, the, the fee, right? You're not gonna no business owner right. eats the fee. No state eats the fee of what gas or the gas tax or electric or or sewer or towns and bridges. Like it, it's it's like economics 101. It drives me crazy. And and then everybody gets so so worried about that. And then dare I say, right? Dare right. I even go off on a tangent and say, okay, now since people roam the earth. They like to smoke. 
I don't care what you smoke. I'm not here to say premium cigars is better than cigarettes. I'm not here to say freaking if you smoke freaking vape with your man bun, you're crazy, right? That's not, that's not, that's not what I'm not here to say. If you're spitting, chewing tobacco on your freaking horse in freaking Montana, doing whatever you got to do. I'm not saying that, that one's better than the other. The bottom line is people, people enjoy smoking at, at any level, whether it's Saturday night, and I got a babysitter for my kids, and we're going to go out and rip it up with the local cigar bar, and then we're going to go eat or vice versa and, and, right. and, and use. Or if it's an everyday smoker, like obviously us, who, yep. who, who enjoys smoking. The bottom line is I enjoy smoking, and people enjoyed smoking. Indians and, and, and people before Indians and, and cavemen, and they were bored. They were hanging around. They drew some pictures on the wall. They did some stuff, and what they do? They lit up something and smoked it. I mean, it's it, it, if did. you watch the History Channel, it's like you, that is part of culture. Now, whether it's American culture or across the pond over in Europe, either way, people just enjoy it. And if All and if people enjoy something or need something, the government's going to say, let let's try to make money. So logic would tell me, let's define a category and let them make money. So let me take that a step further, and and I'm I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, it's not that I'm being biased because I'm I'm in the industry, but uh, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, for me, the cigar culture uh, stands alone. It's it's different from everything else that you mentioned. Um, it's a different feel. It's a different vibe. It's a different atmosphere when you walk into a, a lounge. Um, the cigar culture it truly fascinates me. It's one of the things I love, and that's that's why I do it. Uh, uh, interacting with people, there's there's a certain camaraderie uh, that exists mm -hmm. uh, with people who smoke cigars. When you walk into a lounge, you know I, I could be there just like this with my uh, shirt and my my uh, my hat and everything, and you never know who that person is next to you. You know, unassuming, and you just meet the most wonderful, interesting people. It doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter uh, what your ethnicity is. It, uh, it, your ec economic background means nothing. Your job, everything. This right here brings everybody together. Yep. This is what ties us together. And the bonds that, that you make, the people that you meet, it's unlike anything. Uh, I mean, for me, that's, that's my go-to place, right? Sharing a cigar with somebody, engaging in conversation, because you never know who that is. So that alone is is just something uh, something you don't want to overlook. Now, going back to uh, all the things that you said about how um, uh, it'll affect manufacturers, uh, the boutiques, and uh, the testing and all that. But let's really touch on the domino effect that that's going to have, mm -hmm. because if they implement this, if they're going to do all this testing, a lot of these boutiques don't have the financial backing to even, uh, you know, comply. That right? I agree with. Yep. So hundreds, hundreds of boutiques are, are, are going to disappear like that. All those cigars are going to disappear off the shelves of, of, of shops. There are, and God bless them, there are so many uh, uh, boutique supporters and, and, and lounges that cater specifically to boutiques right mm -hmm. what's going to happen to them that's going to disappear so now you're also putting reps out of business you're putting uh you're putting a, a hardship on distributors um what's happening in the factories are all these people in those factories uh, with whatever they're making which i assure you isn't anything to you know retire off of what's going to happen to them now, if these uh, factories start closing their doors, these people are out of business. What's going to happen to their families? Now, all, everybody's in an uproar about how we're going to handle uh, immigration, right? Well, you're going to put thousands of people out of work, whether it's in Honduras, whether it's in the Dominican, uh, whether it's in Nicaragua. What happens next? So... Um, I don't even want to think of uh, of how this will impact the industry and all the people in it who 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 really uh, give their blood, sweat, and tear, uh, you know, to make a living. So that's something I don't even want to think about because it's catastrophic. Right. But do you realistically think it's going to come down? For sure. Do you realistically think that it's really going to come down anytime soon? I don't. I don't, I don't, and I, I see that it's uh, it's kind of you know they're they're kicking the can, if you sure. will. Yep. Um, now whether uh, whether 
God willing, they're going to squash it. That that would be the right thing, if you ask me. That's my opinion. Or if if they feel they need to do something, some kind of regulation, what they have in place now, I think is is uh, not the way to go because it'll be detrimental. Mm-hmm. I'd even rather go with your idea, your philosophy on on how to approach this as opposed to what they want to uh, put in place now. Yeah, yeah. So, I I think honestly, uh, logic would tell me that they most likely would never take it off the table. Because once you right. take it off the table, um, it, it closes the door, right? It closes right. the door, and the government doesn't want to do that, so they want to have a balance. So they may, maybe they want to keep keep that industry or keep OTB on their toes while they figure it out. They have much more things to do, like borders and bridges and protection and 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 tariffs and potential deals and uh, potential outside threats. Uh, to protect the borders there. And I think that, right. honestly, like I- I've said this numerous times, it's going to be probably most likely a kick the can down the road, um, kick can down the yeah. road scenario. Unfortunately, you as a business owner, it, it does leave you in limbo uh, there. Yeah. But at some point, maybe that might be the new norm for the next 10 years. And if that's the new norm for the next 10 years, you as a business owner – have to figure out a way, just like if they ever dropped the gauntlet in other shops that would survive on boutiques or, or uh, factories that just roll the boutiques do that, they would have to find a new way to survive. And, and, and I, just, I just wish that th- we would know, and, but I don't think that we're ever going to know. And I don't think that, that we're ever going to be uh, fully regulated to the extent of that 250 research fee it, it, it might it might because who's, who's gonna because then now they have to put in place for research right so it's kind of like you know if a state has never had we drove through texas and you have like your right. your pass on your your windshield right your, mm-hmm. and you yeah. drive and, and you it cost you 70 cents to go down this road every day right whatever it is 30 cents whatever it is and that's yeah. how they take care of the highways and bridges and all of that stuff but if you're a state that has never had that 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 toll gantry access to payment system and you try to put that in place then you start to begin some right. potential regulation and do that that takes some years just to do it that does. and 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 when you try to do it on the u.s scale because most of these companies like u.s dav if 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 they if they do that if they drop that gauntlet, you can still do business across the pond. Yes. And most countries are like, you know, something. Pff, they may take the route of Cuba and say, you know, something. Heck, we United States. Now I know that that hurts the consumer. I know, but they will. But the, again, people like to smoke since the dawn of time, and may, maybe that that would be the new existence you know story geeks would have to interview boutiques from across the pond because there might not be any i'm making the extreme argument but you know you can always do so still do business so i guess the the philosophy for now and as as it went back to what we were discussing earlier um growth the smart approach would be slow and steady that's the only way to do it and of course as i said um to support our retailers and um I can't imagine what some of these people would do if they had to close their doors. Um, and, and just, just, just. Even last night, uh, uh, God bless him, uh, Sky Ernest. Uh, he he put everything he had, uh, you know, uh, monetarily and, and his countless hours and his sweat to uh, open up his lounge. Um, if you guys are ever on this way, New Rochelle, uh, Mash Cigar Lounge. I'm saying this because uh, Val and I actually. Um, had an event there last night, um, very well attended, but, you know, we like to sit and talk to everybody and, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, get to know the uh, consumer there and, and what their preferences are, you know, what they like. And of course, sitting down with the owner and he says, look, uh, I'm, I'm coming up on a year, but it's a tough, it's very tough. And it, it really takes a toll on you in, in, in uh, every way. And, uh, it would be shame because you know that in his heart, this is what he wants to do. This is what he's devoted himself to. Yep. And all he want, all all he guy wants to do is make a living, right? Right. Right. Sure. So, but he's got yeah, you got but you got to make you got to make your place a destination, just like you've got to make your cigar 
you have got to make yeah. DAV cigars a destination for the consumers. You're going to make it yeah. a destination for the consumers. How do you do that? You build top of mind awareness. You do events. You get out there in the community. You try to do it, and it's got to be a destination. Same rules apply here. I'm not sitting here. I, I, I do get some email that, that's, that, that calls me uh, a little, like, Napoleonic. You know what I mean? With, 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 oh, wow. with, with, my, with my approach. By the way, you can send all your email to Drew at StoryGeeks.com. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, no, no, and, and, and it's like, you know, the, the same rules apply for Story Geeks, right? We have to have a, a riveting content for people want to listen. Yep. So sponsors sure. want to come in and say, hey, you know something? I should include our marketing activities with the, 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 that group of guys over at Story Geeks or guys and gals over at Story Geeks because, yes. because it's a destination for their output. And, and, and DAV exactly. cigars, it's the same thing. It's destination for output. And I think we all, when we're all doing our jobs and, and we're, we're trying to do that, we all lose focus of that some, sometimes. You know, you know we, we all feel sure it. We do. And we all feel it. We all know it. But, you know, like, do we lose focus of that uh, there? Um, I don't know. I mean, we, I could certainly talk to you for hours and hours about this for sure. Um, but, uh, Drew, do you have a final question for Armin? Uh, yeah, Armin, I was just going to talk about the, uh, the uh, I guess, the blending process. I, mean, I know we covered some of that, but for the listeners who are out there uh, here, in, here, here in Texas right now, I mean, we created a buzz here just from last weekend, and, 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 uh, and my cigar uh, lounge uh, uh, patrons, I mean, they're, they're, they're excited about it. They're... Uh, uh, they want to know more about it. So I just told them to go to the website. Uh, yes. Also, just yes. Just anything else? Um, honestly, yeah, I do urge people to go to our website. Um, all the information is there uh, pertaining to blends and sizes and all that stuff. Um, uh, we also uh, have uh, our, our uh, Twitter platform, uh, where, uh, which is DAV Cigars. We're on Facebook, DAV Cigars. We're on Instagram as DAV Premium Cigars, so we're we're always trying to um, you know be out there for any questions or inquiries and uh, stuff like that. So we're going to engage uh, more with uh, where that's concerned. But yeah, look, uh, as I said, until the dust settles, we're going to continue the way we have been. Um, Val and I are are now in talks with. Um, having another blend come out. We don't have uh, a date set yet, but um, um, as of now, uh, it will probably be like an anniversary uh, edition. Mm -hmm. Nice. So nice. Once we kind of formulate that and, and we have all, the, all that worked out, I'd love to come to you guys and uh, uh, fill you in on everything going on with that. Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. Anything you want us to announce or whatever on the show, you have something coming up, you want to come on, you have my email, you have Drew's email. Well, I love you guys. I'll come on and talk about anything from sports to weather to uh, uh, yeah. going back down to Texas I, and having a good time with Drew. So so whatever it is, uh, I've, I've had a blast with you guys. And I really do thank you from the bottom of our hearts because, again, what you also touched on, Joe, uh, how it's easy to lose focus, that we're all uh, in this together. And it's it's not just about the lounges. It's you guys Um because look, without you, you said, uh, you know, getting the name out there and getting the brand recognition. Well, this is the ideal platform for, for somebody uh, like myself, because you're gracious enough to have me on as a guest and um, take the time to uh, have me talk about my brand, which I, I, I so greatly appreciate. Uh, and it works both ways. If, if there are ways that we can always support your podcast and uh anything else any other projects that that you have going on i say this and i'll say it again we're all in this together absolutely so. yeah absolutely. absolutely and then you know the, 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 <clears throat> it's, it's a pleasure hearing your your, your story and and your Thank perspective you. because it's it's interesting how you know uh, businesses like yourself and they start and then you know you fast forward a couple years and then now you're like all right well let's let let's do an anniversary series let's let's try to get out there more 
Um, the big theme, this is my final question. The big theme now out is a lot of collaboration work. Have you looked at, have you looked at, you know, looking at maybe doing a class, you know, a lot of collabor collaboration work works two ways, right? You yeah. have a small batch company that attaches to a classic facing and, you know, they either get dragged up or down, depending on the plan and if it's good, right? They get dragged up or down uh, there. Or you kind of team up with a smaller, another person who has the same market share as you and do some collaboration work to produce a blend together and stuff like that. Because I honestly think, regardless of FDA, regardless of future plans, regardless of that industry-wise cigars in general is going to be we're going to see a lot of two things right uh in order right we're going to see yeah. a lot of short term when i say short term five years right sir right, right? uh short term we're going to see a lot of collaboration and yes. then long term plus five years we're going to see a lot of consolidation regardless of right. fda you know what i mean so you know which which that's what happens in other economic and other business sectors for sure um, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but so, but, but, you know, for the sake of today's interview, right? Do yes. I, I, are you looking at any type of, you know, hey, we, 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 we should team up with them, or, or, uh, or is that like, you know, some, some people are territorial, like they just want to focus on their business and, and do their thing, you know? I, I could tell you, but then I'm gonna have to kill you. Uh, no, honestly, <laughs> uh, Joe, you're, you're good, man. I have to tell you because. Uh, you know, in preparation for today, and I, obviously I wanted to make sure that I had uh, good content and, and I didn't have you know, people dozing off. No, nope. um, I had uh, I, I had my own checklist and I pretty much checked everything off about 15 minutes ago. And, and this final question of yours was, was something also very important. And it, it I guess if uh, if if today had a, a theme if I were to categorize it with one word, it would be solidarity, mm -hmm. right? Because yes. because it's it's crucial where we are now with the industry and everything we spoke about. Um, so yes, you are seeing more collaboration. You will continue to see more collaboration. Um, we we're coming up with our own strategy with that, but I will uh, I will reiterate what I said earlier. Uh, what I said pertaining to the BCA, the Boutique Cigar Association. Mm -hmm. yes. So uh, if, uh, collaboration, um, I think that would be the, the, the platform uh, to help us out, uh, not only with legislation, not only with what's happening with the FDA, but uh, again, uh, boutiques do have to stick together. So I can, I can leave it at that. Uh, yes, we're always thinking of different ways to collaborate because I tell people, look, you and I are the same. We have a passion for this business. We put our blood, sweat, and tears into it. Um, you know, Val and I uh, uh, have been uh, really, really uh, um, uh, uh, put our heart and soul into this. Uh, uh, even, even monetarily, it's, it's, it's. We've, we've. We've yeah. devoted ourselves to this to make this succeed yeah. uh, in any way that we possibly can. And I know there are many people who are in the same boat. So uh, if, if people are still thinking, well, I'm going to do this on my own, I'm going to do this on my own. We're not here to step on anybody's toes. Uh, as I said, people should understand there's growth for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of, uh, of doing it better. It's a matter of doing it efficiently. And it's to ensure uh, our future, to have longevity in this business, not to be in it and try to crank crank it out for another six months and then have you uh, close your doors. Mm -hmm. So I think it is crucial. Yes, uh, we're always uh, looking for uh, different ideas and, and, and avenues. Um, but for now, I would say uh, that would be a, a great platform for any BCA who's uh, who's looking to be in this for the long haul. Yeah, yeah. And for you Story Geeks listeners, uh, if you go to the, T-H-E, B-C-A-A dot org, you can see a list of those cigar companies that are part of the Boutique Cigar Association. Uh, interestingly enough, I just scrolled through the list. 
as you were talking, and I'm like, huh, well, that makes a lot of sense was, for some of the interviews that we had. But anyway, that's another that's another episode, right, uh, there. And if Absolutely, you... and uh, definitely make it happen because it'll be worthwhile for, for you guys and yeah. for listeners. Um, I guarantee that, that that episode will have a lot of buzz. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I'd be interested to get them on, uh, Drew, if we can make a little side note for, for – uh, be like, I just need to get them on with with a panel of lawyers as well, and talk about like what uh, what, are you, what are you gonna do, you know, for sure, for sure. But um, yeah, absolutely. Well, Armin, thank you for your for your time, and thank you for your insider pleasure. information for us. And best of luck to you and your company. And uh, you. please keep in touch for sure. I, I will certainly, and thanks again. It was a, a real pleasure. I really appreciate the opportunity, and uh, looking forward to being on again if you'll have me. Absolutely, we're gonna have to do another episode where we compare uh, baseball uh, uh, sayings to to the cigar industry. So we we should <laughs> we should make a plan to do that before the calendar month of February goes out. I think that'd be a super cool. Episode. That and going out and firing a few more shots with Drew. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You gotta get to the gun range. Oh yeah, I mean, I took him to the gun range. And, uh, I was, I was, I was laughing at some of your friends, man. They were, they were uh, p- uh, uh, posting a uh, uh, comments about you. They're like, oh man, this guy looks looks uh, like a. Assassin. They don't know any better. Now you were my witness, and you saw those targets, brother. You tell them what the truth is. You tell them how good I was. <laughs> Oh yeah. One shot, one kill, right? There you go. Right? That's one it, shot, brother. one kill. You got it. There you go. Um, and thank you for your time. Stoy Geeks, we'll be back with the second segment where we talk about sticks of the week. We'll take a quick break. 